iPhone 15 Pro versus iPhone 13 Pro speed test coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at the iPhone 15 Pro versus the iPhone 13 Pro in a speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go. And you can see on the left, we will have ourselves an Apple A17 Pro chipset. That is a three nanometer chip, just like the one announced for the MacBook Pro at the Scary Fast event yesterday. They have an M3, three nanometer. So you'll see over here, now we have the Apple A15 Bionic on the iPhone 13 Pro. So this one has the same chip as you'll find on the iPhone 14. And it did turn on a little bit slower than the iPhone 15 Pro, so a little bit quicker there to boot up on the left. Now, when it comes to the general performance between both these phones, they both do have a very smooth 120 hertz. So let me zoom in a little bit here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Super smooth on the iPhone 13 Pro and super smooth there for the iPhone 15 Pro. The, th the deal is though, is that nothing has really changed here between them. The only thing that really is very noticeable is that the bezels have gotten much thinner and to a point where you kind of feel like the 13 Pro definitely looks like a last gen phone um, if you compare it side by side. But um, if you're not comparing it, it doesn't really matter. But I do definitely appreciate these thinner bezels on the 15 Pro. At the same time, general performance is no real difference here day to day, no matter if you're going into the control center, adding a widget, going to the app library, swiping through pages, it is exactly the same day to day. Let's go into Geekbench 6 and you'll see over here, we do have iOS 17.1 on the 13 Pro and we have iOS 17.1 on the 15 Pro. And you'll see everything is closed out here for both devices. Let's begin with calendar. And you can see that looks about the same. And here's the thing, when you do scroll, they have that same look and feel as well due to having the same refresh. Let's go into clock. As a matter of fact, the iPhone 13 Pro looks smoother than the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Plus, which is saying something. It means that you should consider getting a 13 Pro or Pro Max if you want a cheaper version of a smooth promotion iPhone. And you could see that looked like the left. And we'll get up out of there. We'll go on the calculator. You'll see very close, App Store. Ex almost exactly the same launch speed games. That's slightly to the left. And you'll see apps. That's on the left. So again, are we looking at, yeah, we're looking at just milliseconds here. Maybe not even a full second difference on some of these swiping out. Let's go into Groupon. And you can see Groupon first there on the left. We'll go into categories, about the same things to do. And so you can see no real major issue. See, I feel like Apple could actually, you know, do some a little bit more than just, you know, say we have a faster chip. Like, why not increase the animations, make them maybe slightly snappier, faster. So at least we feel like we get an upgrade because so far I feel like I have zero upgrade here um, in terms of, let's go over here to the profile page in terms of just the launching of day-to-day -day apps. And so that's good for 13 Pro users. But I, I just want to see, I mean, the, the, these prices we upgrade these phones to, I think we should see something a little bit more visual. And we're not even seeing visual changes anymore because promotion is promotion on both. I mean, the dynamic island is pretty obvious. Let's go into Amazon. You can see that was slightly to the left, but I mean, that was very, very slight. About the same, set up out of there. We'll go into Starbucks. Coffee. Mm millisecond faster on the left. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. And can we launch games faster with the six core GPU? <clears throat> Barely. And yes, we will probably have a little bit more power in the iPhone 15 Pro um, in the long term. But see, the thing is, is a lot of mobile games have been very well optimized. And so what that means is that most mobile games, as long as you have a decently powerful chip, will run very well. I've been testing out the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus, which has an Exynos 1380, and it can run Call of Duty on high graphics just fine. Um, and that's a mid-range chip. So 
what I'm trying to say is that I've been experiencing, you know, mid-ranger phones performing pretty well in mobile games as well, which means that only when you're pushing it to the maximum level, which I think is a very tiny majority of users, um, it's not really noticeable. Let's go to play. And so if you have the 13 Pro, the real upgrade would be the, if you want the dynamic island experience, if you want um, maybe a little bit better battery life, depending, some people will have pretty similar if they had great battery life on their 13 Pro, but if your battery is starting to get old, you'll probably get that. Um, if you want a much lighter design, that's pretty noticeable. Um, it's just, I think if you have a 13 Pro and you're looking for something major, either go to the 15 Pro Max, which would feel like a bigger upgrade, or maybe wait it out till next year to see if there's something more revolutionary. Because here, it's probably a better upgrade if you have a 12 Pro or an 11 Pro, especially if you have an 11 Pro, definitely a better upgrade from that phone. And you can see PUBG Mobile does turn on faster and by a pretty decent margin. So here we are in something a little bit more demanding and you see the 15 Pro did show its stuff. And so as those console quality games come out, you know, it's going to get better and better for 15 Pro. Let's go into Real Racing 3 and see which one can load this up first. And you'll see, it looks like, see the 15 Pro, here we go. Now we're pushing the graphics a little bit and the 15 Pro is ahead. So there's your proof right there. We don't even have to play the game. You've seen it's loading a graphically intensive portion. Geekbench 6 is still not properly you know, updated for 15 Pro to launch faster, but you can see it's clocked higher at 3.77 gigahertz and has more RAM. So it potentially can be better in the area of RAM as well. So if you're looking for that, that's another advantage. Let's head up out of here. And we'll go over here to the 3D Mark, three, two, go. About the same, we'll swipe up out of there. We'll go into iMovie now and nearly the same camera. Faster on the left than Happy Halloween. As you can see, I have the Halloween themes. Let me know in the comments if you're going trick or treating tonight or if you're taking the fam. Um, what are you doing for Halloween? Are you watching some movies, some spooky movies? Let me know down below in the comments. But um, it's looking like with the 13 Pro versus the 15 Pro on 17.1, here's the good news. Apple's not slowing down the 13 Pro. So for those of you who think Apple slows down their old phones, not the case here. And the 15 Pro shines in the area of games. Um, definitely gonna push it forward if you really like to play games. So these chips are really gonna come down to those power users if they can really take advantage of them um, at this point because they've been so fast for so long. You know, it's just, it's, it's great on both phones. So let's go ahead and take it back through the applications now and see what we get in terms of the reloads. I don't think we're gonna see anything in the way of either phone. We have six gigs of RAM on the right and we do have eight gigabytes of RAM on the left. Let's go into PUBG Mobile and Apple doing the best in the industry when it comes to animations. And you can see no major difference. Dead Trigger 2, very good. Starbucks, very good. Amazon, Instagram, X, and hold on, that was my fault. Let's go into Groupon, no issues. So 13 Pro, man, what a great phone that was. If you got that phone, I feel like you had a, a really good option there. And you could see zero issues on both, near flawless performance on both phones, very good. Geekbench score is finished for iPhone 15 Pro significantly faster. It has a 2912 on the single core and a 7244 on that multi-core score. Now, if you take a look at the single cores for the 15 Pro, they are even benching higher than 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max, even supposedly higher than the 11 inch M2, which I'm gonna go ahead and face it off against. But if you comparatively look at these results, it's only 600 points or so on the single core, which means daily usage, um, probably not that serious uh, difference that most people are gonna notice. And not even a full 2000 on the multi-core score. And so <laughs> the iPhone 13 Pro is still packing, penny, packing, packing plenty of heat uh, for the future. So definitely very nice. 
Let's go into 3D Mark now and we'll run the Wildlife Extreme and see what kind of scores graphically we'll get uh, on these two, what the frame rates are like, and uh, I'll be back when they're in. Okay, and the final 3D Mark scores are in and the 15 Pro really crushed the 13 Pro here. 3816 on that overall score with a higher frame rate of 70 or 22 point eight fps now if you look at the right 14.9 fps but over a thousand points better and you can see the battery dropped five did it say does it say five percentage i think that's off because we have 77 it says 80 to 75 but it dropped a more it, it dropped more in the iphone 13 pro also frame rates 10 to 21, but 11 to 31. So it can go higher on the iPhone 15 Pro and scores nearly twice as good. So this is a big jump for sure in the graphics department. So if you're gonna play console quality games on this 6.1 inch iPhone, um, you'll definitely want that 15 Pro. But if you just wanna play really great games and you're happy with your 13 Pro, it's gonna be no issue either. And the last thing we're gonna take a look at is how fast can they launch the cameras? on both phones. Let's go ahead and hop over to the cameras. Make sure they're both closed out here before we get started. Close them out, close them out, and we'll head into camera. You could see that might've been the 13 Pro. I could be wrong. Let's go into camera. Yeah, I think that was a 13 Pro. Man, the 13 Pro's camera just looks so good still. It doesn't have a ton of bokeh, but just has a really good standard shot for most people. Also, it has the macro mode, like this has the macro mode, and it still has three times zoom on both of them, 15 times still, 15 times, so no increase in zoom, and you do have better video quality on the iPhone 15 Pro, but no increase in zoom makes us a tough, you know, recommend as well, just for the straight camera department as well, unless you want those, you know, ProRes features and all that, you want that extra ProRes stuff. You know, 15 Pro is a jump in the camera, but it's not so drastic that it's like you have to go get it right now. So this is the end of the speed test. I would say that the 15 Pro only really dominates in the graphics department. A CPU performance is still very close for most everyday users. And I don't think it's a big issue if you have the 13 Pro, unless you just really want the latest and greatest. In that case, go for it. It's still a big jump in certain areas, um, but the 13 Pro is doing just fine, and both phones really excel at just being a really great everyday device that has really good software and software updates. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well, and peace.